Okay, in this video, we are going to be doing a review quiz on volume and area, and we're going to be using our calculator extensively. Let's get started. Number one, uh, the graph above shows the region between f of x, it, which is 5x squared, and g of x equals 10x cubed. For all problems, set up the necessary integral and then use your calculator to evaluate it. All right. Question number one says, use a definite integral to find the area of the region. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, define some functions on the calculator. We need to find the intersection point, and then we're going to set up our integral um, and find the answer. So to the calculator. So we have our intersection points, they are zero and one half, which you can also see in the picture that we were given, but like you shouldn't really just rely on that. Um, so I'm gonna set up my integral, it's gonna be top, take away, bottom, and then from left to right. So we are gonna be doing uh, the integral from zero to one half, because that's the left end point of the region to the right end point of the region. The top curve is f of x and the bottom is g of x. So I'm gonna write f of x minus g of x dx. And then uh, I'm going to use the calculator to evaluate this integral. So let's do that. And finally, I'm going to write my answer as approximately to three decimal places, 0 0.052. And let's move on to question number two. Same setup. Uh, the region is the base of a solid whose cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. Uh, we definitely need to remember how to use semicircles for our cross-sectional area. Uh, we have the same bounds and all of that set up, so I'm just going to uh, figure out what S is, which is the segment uh, on which we base our area formula. So that's gonna be top takeaway bottom in this case because uh, we're using things perpendicular to the x-axis. So it's gonna be top takeaway bottom for that. And then uh, that means that S in this case is top takeaway bottom, f of x minus g of x. I'm now gonna set up my integral and then I will use the calculator to evaluate it. So pi over eight is the coefficient. Uh, because of the semicircles, you definitely want to memorize that. We're still going 0 to 1 half, and then it's s squared. So it's pi over 8 s squared is the integral that we're doing here. So we have f of x minus g of x squared dx. Now we're going to use the calculator to evaluate this.
and we write our answer to three decimal places. So approximately 0 0.003, which is really, really small. Okay, let's move on to question number three. So the region is revolved around the x-axis. Use a definite integral to find the volume of the solid formed. All right, so to go around the x-axis, what we're gonna do, because you can see that the region has like a gap between it and the x-axis, we're gonna have a big radius and a little radius. Our big radius goes from the axis out as far as you can go. So R is gonna, big R is gonna be f of x. That's the top take away the bottom. The bottom in this case is y equals zero, so it's really f of x minus zero. We're gonna have a smaller radius which is kind of a volume that we're carving out. And in this case, it is uh, top takeaway bottom again. That curve is g of x, so g of x minus zero. We can set this up. So it's pi, the integral from a to b, big radius squared minus little radius squared, and then dx. So pi, the integral from zero to one half. And then we have to do big radius squared, which is f of x squared minus little radius squared, so minus g of x squared, and then dx. Now we'll use the calculator to evaluate this. And we'll write our answer to three decimal places. All right, so it's all about setting it up on the calc, well, setting it up on paper and then using the calculator to find our answers. Let's take a look at the next one. The region is revolved around the line y equals two. We wanna use a definite integral to find the volume of the solid form. All right, so I'm gonna add in the line y equals two because I think that's a really good idea. We can see the line is above the region. We're gonna rotate around it. Um, so we're going to have a big R and a little r because, again, the region isn't uh, directly on top of that line. There's a gap there. So big R goes from the outer curve to the axis. So in this case, that's going to be top takeaway bottom. So that's 2, which is the top, minus the bottom, which is g of x. And then our little r right there is going to go from top to bottom. So it's 2 minus f of x. So again, we're just doing pi times uh, big volume minus little volume. Well, we're really doing big volume minus little volume. It's going to be pi, the integral of big R squared minus little r squared. Let's set that up. So it's pi, still going from 0 to 1 half, big R using parentheses squared, and then minus little r squared, and then dx. And then we'll use the calculator to evaluate this. You can see that I'm just going to modify what we previously have typed in. And then we write our answer to three decimal places. So 0.514. And let's move on to the next problem, problem number five. The region is the base of a solid whose cross section is perpendicular to the y-axis. So this is a big deal. It's perpendicular to the y-axis now. Our rectangle is with base in the region and height six times the length of the base. We want to use a definite integral to find the volume of the solid. So perpendicular to the y-axis means that we should draw a little segment perpendicular to the y-axis. Now everything needs to change. We need functions of y. We need y bounds. Um, we got to set this up so that we can use dy. That's the whole premise. We also need, from our intersection point, the y value because of the y bounds that we need. So the intersection point we found earlier was uh, 0.5 comma 1.25. So now we're going to be going from 0 to 1.25, the y bounds. Let's invert these functions. So we will take f of x equals 5x squared. We will make it y equals 5x squared. And then we're going to solve for x. So x is going to be y over 5 and then square root of that. So it's technically plus or minus, but because we are on the right-hand side, we need to get positive values. So it's positive uh, y over 5 to the 1 half. I'm going to name this f1 of y, which from the calculator's perspective is actually a terrible idea. Um, you should just name it something else like h of y or, or whatever. But f was a bad choice because we already used f and we already graphed it. 
but I made that choice anyway. I'm gonna do the same thing for g of x. So g of x is 10x cubed, which means that y is 10x cubed, which means that x is gonna be y over 10 all to the one third. And I'm gonna name that g1 of y. And the reason that I'm naming it is because it makes my work look simpler. So we need to figure out what s is. Uh, so s is gonna be right takeaway left. So if you're in a dx situation, it's top takeaway bottom. If you're in a dy situation, it's a right takeaway left. So that's g1 of y minus f1 of y. Now let's like think about this shape that we're making. It's a rectangle. So here's a rectangle. Um, the base is in the region. So the base is gonna be s. And then the height is six times the length of the base, so the height must be 6s. So the area is just 6 times s times s, or 6s squared. So we can set up our integral. It's going to be 6, the integral from 0 to 1.25. Remember, these are y bounds because it's dy, and every function is a function of y. I'm trying to stress that, all the y stuff. Um, and then it's going to be s squared. So g1 of y minus f1 of y and then squared, so it's subtract and then square uh, in this case, because we're figuring out s, we're really just doing s squared, as opposed to the volume problem where we're doing big R squared minus little r squared. Say those things in your head and you are less likely to mess them up later on. Um, now we will use our calculator to evaluate this. And we will put in our approximate answer to three decimal places, so 0 0.017. Okay, let's move on to question number six. The region is revolved around the y-axis, definite integral to find the volume, going around the y-axis. So let's show that. We're going to have a big R and a little r because there's a gap between the region and the axis. So big R, we're going to go from the axis all the way out to the outer edge. So that is going to be um, the right curve, take away the left curve, right, take away left, always. The right-hand curve in this case is what we call g1 of y. So it's going to be g1 of y minus 0. Um, but we're just going to write this. Our little r goes from the axis to the inner curve. So that's going to be f1 of y minus 0, or just f1 of y. We're going to set it up. We're doing pi, the integral from a to b, big R squared minus little r squared. In this case, a and b are y values, so we will have pi, the integral from 0 to 1.25, because those are our y bounds, big R squared, so here we're squaring and then subtracting, as opposed to the previous problem where we subtracted and then squared, but really in your mind, just say what you're doing, big R squared minus little r squared versus s squared, it's a big difference. Um, we'll now use the calculator to just evaluate this. our answer to three decimal places and get this. All right, now we are moving on to question number seven, the final question that was on this particular quiz. The region is revolved around the line x equals one um, and we want to find the volume. So we're going to do the same thing that we always do. I'm going to put in x equals one because it gives me a visual representation. From that I can find big R, I can find little r. Big R, we're going to start at the axis and go to the outer edge of our region. So in this case, that's going to be 1 minus what we called f1 of y. And then our little r, we'll do the same idea. We go from the inner curve to the axis. We're always doing right take away left, so it's going to be 1 minus what we call g1 of y. And our volume is the same setup. It's pi, the integral from a to b, big r squared minus little r squared. So pi, 
integral from a to b, one, uh, 0 to 1.25. Remember, those are y values because it's dy, and every function is a function of y. Say it to yourself, say it out loud, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then we will put big R, square it, minus little r, square it, dy. We're going to go to the calculator one final time. And we will write our answer to three decimal places. And that's it. That's a pretty good review of um, area. Not so much area, but mostly volume. These are the concepts that you'll run into in terms of volume. So make sure you can get 100 on this quiz because that will serve you very well on the AP Calculus exam. I hope this was helpful and good luck.